Hey, happy Friday to you. The funnies this week are coming to you from beautiful Lake Tahoe, where it took me ooh, about 12 hours to get here yesterday. Between weather delays and flight delays and sitting around airports, it took forever, but thank goodness I'm here now. As a matter of fact, because of all the flight delays, I was writing these Friday funnies at the airport. And it's a funny thing about flight delays. While every flight yesterday was delayed due to the weather, some people get a little testy over the inconvenience. They rant, they rave, they demand to speak to the person in charge of the weather, and they undoubtedly wind up sitting next to me on the flight. And they will continue to rant and rave on the flight even though I've got headphones on and pretending I'm not listening to them. But thanks to the delay, I had time to create this week's Friday Funnies while sitting on the floor at the airport with my laptop actually in my lap. Here then are this week's Friday Funnies. We've all lost our car keys at one time or another, at least that we forgot where we left them. And usually the problem resolves itself and the keys turn up. But for Andrew Levigier, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, it presented a bigger problem. Levigier is a 57-year-old serial bank robber from Portland, Oregon. This week he robbed a Wells Fargo branch in Portland and made off with an undisclosed amount of cash. He also made off without his car keys, which he left sitting on the counter by the teller. When he ran out of the bank, he realized he had a problem and tried to run away on foot, but he was quickly caught and charged with six recent bank robberies. Now, this should be a lesson for all potential bank robbers out there who have reached the age of forgetfulness. When pulling a heist, make a list. One, approach teller, show gun. Two, get the cash. Three, remember your car keys. Four, remember where you parked your car. One of the biggest fears for small children is that monsters live under their beds. Of course, there are no monsters, but mom or dad still have to do an inspection just to assure the child everything's going to be okay. The nightly monster check is something that every adult should do every night especially if they live in Zimbabwe. Guy Whittall is a director of the Humani Lodge in Zimbabwe, and he was staying in one of the rooms, unaware that right under the bed he was sleeping in was a 300-pound crocodile. The croc apparently crawled into the room when nobody was looking and curled up under Whittall's bed. Now, he was oblivious to the peril all night long, and it wasn't until the next morning when he was enjoying breakfast that he heard these blood-curdling screams coming from the maid. He ran back to the room and saw, saw the ginormous reptile. Now, several staff members from the lodge dragged the croc outside by its tail, tied it up, and later released it back into the river. And Whittall was uh, unhurt by the episode, but I'm guessing he probably had a laundry problem after he saw what he was sleeping inches away from all night long. He also complained that his slippers were missing. Dan Sandler is a nut job. He's a 50-year-old man who dresses up like Elmo, the much-beloved Sesame Street character. But when he's in full regalia, he is anything but loved. Last year, he stood at Times Square in his Elmo outfit and screamed anti-Semitic slurs at passersby. This time, he tried to blackmail the Girl Scouts of America for $2 million. He told the Girl Scouts that unless they ponied up the money, he would start spreading rumors that the Girl Scouts set up sexual encounters between adult men and underage girls. Well, since the guy was wearing an Elmo costume, he's not that hard to find. And Sandler was arrested and charged with extortion and now faces jail time. My question is, will he still be able to wear the Elmo costume in prison? I think it would brighten up the days for his fellow prisoners and then give an entirely new meaning to Tickle Me Elmo. Hey, that's all I have for you this week from beautiful Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Uh, we'll be back next week in our regular funny studio, regular funnies time. See you then.